Okay, welcome and hello. And this is Adventures in Visibility. And one of our main topic today is going to be around storytelling, which has been part of our culture and civilization since the beginning of man and women. So <laughs> <laughs> like, wait a minute, Denise, <laughs> let's get this right. <laughs> but you know, it's important. Stories are really important for teaching, for motivation, for inspiration, and for imparting any kind of communication. So that's what we're going to be focused on today with my guest, my very special guest. I'm Denise Wakeman, your host and guide to better visibility on the web. So today's guest is Carrie Pena. And Carrie is an award-winning news anchor, investigative journalist, political show host, and now also the founder of Inspired Media 360. Yes. And um, I met Carrie recently, a few weeks ago, when she interviewed me for her podcast, Carrie Pena Reports, and through our good friend, Shannon Hernandez, who I've known since uh, the Google Plus days. That's how we met. So um, I wanted to talk with Carrie today because her message is really all about storytelling. As a news anchor, as a reporter, as a journal journalist, she's telling stories all the time. And now she works with her clients and brands to help them tell their stories. So I thought this was particularly fitting because as you know, all of you who are self-employed, who are solopreneurs or small business owners, it's a struggle every day to get your message out. And one of the best ways to do that is through your story. And I will confess that um, storytelling is a challenge for me because I'm a very linear and literal thinker. <laughs> so I like to tell the facts when, you know, right in order, <laughs> you know, that whole thing. And I know that's not the best way to tell a story. So it's really at the heart of all the content that you're creating. And that's why Carrie Pena is here today. Carrie, welcome to the Thank show. Thank you. My pleasure to be here. You know, Denise, you talked about uh, my background, and mm -hmm. I actually along the way had a, a, a unit uh, at the television station called Storytellers oh. because uh, I really was bugging and nagging my news director about all of these untold stories that I felt were out there that maybe didn't fit um, the discourse that we had in the editorial meeting, but they're mm -hmm. just sort of untold nuggets. And as you mentioned, part of what my company does now is um, in the strategy division is help people develop their brands through storytelling, because I think that those same applications that we use in journalism can be used for individuals who are trying to develop their brands. Yeah. And that is really going to the heart of um, what I love about telling stories. And that is, yeah. what is your message? What are you trying to say? Exactly. And it's never it's never really the most obvious thing. There's usually something much deeper underlying, you know, that, you know, tagline, for example. Yes, absolutely. Well, one of the things that I think is so important in effectively telling stories is first, it, it's amazing to me how many people I ask them, well, what is your story? And they can't definitively answer that. Because I think what we're seeing, and it's so beautiful what we're seeing uh, in our culture right now across the board, I know it's a big market trend, storytelling. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, storytelling is the most powerful way to get your message into the world. But it is amazing to me when you ask a simple question of what is your story, a lot of people can't really pinpoint that. And so I always like to tell people, think of your headline. Who are you and what are you trying to put out into the world? You have to be able to succinctly think through that so that you can think through sub stories. And right. that's how you develop the storytelling for your brand. OK, well, before we get into that. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your story? <laughs> you okay. know, how did you get into journalism and um, news reporting, investigative reporting, and then transition, you know, into having your own company? And are you still uh, news doing news shows or? Yeah. So um, I, since I was 16 years old, wanted to be a news reporter. I love politics and I was fascinated. I'm from Los Angeles and a lot of my friends were in the entertainment industry. And I was just super fascinated with um, the combination of sort of entertainment, but also 
education and learning. I love to learn and I really love to learn about people and what makes them tick. So when I was 16 years old, I realized that I wanted to become a news reporter. And uh, I ended up going to Arizona State to the Walter Cronkite program, which is an amazing broadcasting program. I had the great fortune of scoring an internship at a station here, KTVK in Phoenix. And I worked as a general assignment reporter and then an investigative reporter. I had my own story unit called Storytellers. And then I became the main evening anchor. Uh, in addition, I also hosted our political show. Wow. Um, so, but the interesting thing in all of that was that no matter how much I was on the air, I always was most fascinated with the art of telling stories, even in politics. I interviewed the other day, uh, Kirsten Cinema, who's a Congresswoman. And at first we talked about some of the, you know, headlines, the VA and what's going on at the VA. But then I had also read that she recently completed the Iron Man. And I thought that was so interesting. It says a lot about who she is and how she balances her life as a congresswoman and still being able to compete in the Iron Man. That tells to me a lot about her story, her grit. So I asked her about that. She was named uh, one of the most high profile or most powerful women by Marie Claire magazine. So I asked her about wow. that. These are all things that I think are interesting, sort of the story behind the story. You know, right. what is your headline and then what's the story behind that? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. bringing that back to me, um, I loved working in news and it has been my passion for 15 years. And just at the end of last year, I really wanted to branch out on my own and start a company that's all based really at the heart on storytelling. So I have two divisions. One is our news division. And as you mentioned, uh, part of that is a podcast, Carrie Pena Reports. We've had the good fortune already of being at the top of iTunes News and Politics. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, and I've loved that format because it's 20 minutes. And so I'm able to really talk to people a lot more than just sound bites. Um, right. The other part of my of my um, company is a strategy division, and we do storytelling strategy um, for businesses who I think and brands who I think I can help. And one of the things that I've seen is. Sometimes I think small businesses feel that they don't have the money or the time or the resources to develop their story in the same brilliant ways that big brands do. Mm -hmm. And I just I disagree with that. I think that there's so many amazing stories out there to be told for small business people. And one of the amazing things about social media is that you have the ability to get your message out to the world in a really powerful way. Absolutely. You know, I think that that uh, there's an intimidation factor about, you know, what is your story is that you have to create something that that's, you know, perfect or, yeah. or says it all or, or something. And that might be where some of the, the feelings of inadequacy might come in for a small business or a solo business that, well, you know, what do I have to say, you know? So I want to ask you about that a little bit um, in just a minute, but, um, you know, going going to the to the um, intersection, you mentioned social media about how that's such a great way to get your story out. When did you realize or was there a moment like a turning point where you realized that journalism and social media were kind of that were starting to come together? Oh, this is one of my favorite topics. Oh, good. <laughs> You're speaking my language, Denise. So I was badgering my news director and I don't I don't I'm, I'm hoping I'm giving you the right date, but I think it was about 2007. Um, I was anchoring at the time our weekend morning show, which which is three hours. And Twitter, really, I was falling in love with it because I love direct communication, the good, mm -hmm. the bad, all of it. And as a journalist, I mean, what there's nothing better than being able to hear truly what people think, get additional information. I mean, it's it's all about communication. So I was battering my news director and he was, you know, what is this Twitter? What are you talking about? You're driving me nuts with this. Go ahead and do it because we're going to do what you what want. For lunch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I started really bringing Twitter and incorporating it as one of the first journalists, really, I, I believe, um, to incorporate that into our broadcast. Wow. And I will tell you that it has added so much for me personally as a journalist. And I feel that it added so much early on before I, I don't like social media used in a way that's um, artificial. I like it when it's really, really organic, that you are really just out there to connect with people and to build your brand through those connections. So I started using Twitter early on. And I'll tell you, um, 
it has been incredible for me personally, but also as a journalist. So I was on the news desk the night that Osama bin Laden was uh, captured and killed. And I started learning about that story early on through social media, some of the White House correspondents who I followed at the time. I signaled to our producers because on the weekend, it's sort of a skeleton staff. Mm -hmm. I signaled something's really going on here and we didn't know what it was, but the White House press corps was being called um, back in. And on a Sunday early evening, that's really unheard of. So at any rate, long story made short, I was on the desk solo um, that night and we ended up doing extensive coverage about Osama bin Laden as that was unfolding in the Middle East. And it was amazing to see at that time how social media and how because if you remember, it was it was a collective moment where yeah. as Americans and, and really across the world, Worldwide, people yeah. were celebrating um, this evil person who was finally being taken down. And just to see the instantaneous reaction and the collective reaction of the audience and being able to bring that into the broadcast, um, it was really, to me, a moment that proved really the power of this of social media and being able to see instantaneous reaction and, right. and in particular to an event like that. But you can apply that to so many things. And that's one of the things that I think is important for people when they're looking for storytelling strategy. See what people react to. Oftentimes, most often, if, if you are organic and you're putting something out there, the most organic social media correspondence always gains the most traction, mm -hmm. you know, rather than something that's very manufactured. And um, I, I just think that if you speak from your heart, even as a business owner, whatever you're doing, that is what really people respond to in the storytelling world. OK, so can you talk a little bit more about that, about that? tapping into that organic piece to tell the story because that's you know as a journalist i would imagine i've, I've never been a journalist so i can't speak well you experience. are right now you're you're a journalist so. right now yeah <laughs> <laughs> i guess so i do interview people um but um the getting to that place where you really can tap into the moment and the reaction how do, how can a business do that or a you know a small business do that so i like to tell people that if you see something that is interesting to you a lot of times that will be interesting to other people as well and so i think if you i think a lot of times people really overthink it what should i tweet how should i construct it how you know and in that case a lot of times it comes off like you're trying to sell something. So I will liken that to a lot of broadcasters. And, and you know, now it's become sort of mainstream to tweet out what you're working on. But I was always very against tweeting out, uh, join us at five, we'll have this report. My thought is put the news out there right now because people who are on whatever social media platform, they wanna see it. And then if they wanna tune in to see you on the news, they will do that. So mm -hmm. applying that to the business world, Denise, I think really creating um, a community and connecting with people, not just trying to sell them on what you are doing is part of it. And that's how you build up your brand. And then naturally people have loyalty to you. They wanna find out more about you. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you a little funny story. I interviewed a really cool girl, um, Gelly Akenblitz. She's the founder of Networking Phoenix. And she was telling the story on my show that I thought was great. She talked about how uh, people are intimidated a lot of times to go to mixers because they, they don't know what to say. They don't, they put their name on their name tag and they walk around and it's sort of this stilted interaction. So she talked about how uh, one of the women who was there is uh, put on her name tag, what is your pet's name? So this opened up conversations. And of course, naturally, she's a pet sitter. So it opened up a perfect conversational route for her with everyone without selling something. That mm -hmm. was, in essence, an, a great example, in my mind, of storytelling, right? Right. But a lot of times, the best way to build your brand through storytelling is to learn about the people around you, to learn more about your community rather than just trying to push out information to them. Right. So it doesn't have to be this manufactured story. You know, once upon a time, I started a business kind of, you know, 
thinking about that kind of um, literal interpretation yes, of you what are a very story. literal. Although I do <laughs> love to see the why behind it. For instance, when mm -hmm. I interviewed you, Denise, I thought it was really interesting how you came into where you are now. And I like to hear the backstory. So right now I'm working with a lovely, beautiful woman and she's a lifestyle blogger, um, but she's always seen in perfect clothing and she's always really done up and she's gorgeous. But she expressed to me that she really wants to reach out and work with a cross section of women to help them be their best selves. Well, I had caught about a month or so ago on social media, she had um, put out some pictures of her growing up and expressed how she had uh, weight battles growing up and how she had to fight through those and really um, came into this extensive exercising and health and fitness to get where she is today. And I told her, Julie, I think that's that's your brand right there. That's showing who you are as a person and allowing mm -hmm. people to connect to you and showing that you've walked through this journey. It makes you even more credible um, as someone who wants to be uh, a lifestyle expert and to go out and, and help other people with their lives to show that you are just not this perfect person that you've also right. walked through this journey. And so right now I'm actually doing a project for her that is showing her backstory and telling that story. And then she's going to combine that video project that we're putting together for her with all of her kind of gritty YouTube videos and fun little snaps and vine. I like that approach of doing a little bit. I call it high, low, some higher produced things and then some fun things where you just grab right. your phone and you just bring people into your life and show them why you care about what you're doing. Yeah. What, what's happening right now without all the preparation. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You talked about um, headlines, uh, about your, you know, what is the headline that you, who, of who you are, and then what, then go into the backstory. And, you know, headlines, typically, when I think of a headline, it's something that screams out, you know, and gets our attention on the web or on magazines or print media, or, you know, even the little uh, lower thirds yeah, on the TV, font. on the news, yeah. you know, those are the headlines, yeah. you know. So how do you tell your story using a headline? I mean, where do you start with crafting that? Well, I think you have to really understand if you don't understand what your brand is, you're going to have a hard time selling it to other people. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think first and foremost, you have to understand what is your purpose? The most successful people who I've interviewed um, over the years, including the president of the United States, really have a clear sense of what their purpose is. And I think that applying this through every type of brand and business and a lot of people, Denise, who you work with, I think it's really important to understand, important to understand your headline, your brand. You need to know that this is you should be able to construct a headline for yourself. This is who I am. This is what I stand for. This is my purpose. And then the stories flow from there. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Yeah, I like that. So there's a couple of questions here I'd like to just throw out for you, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, Trudy asked, do you, do you have to have been a journalist first to use or teach storytelling? No, absolutely not. I mean, I don't know what Trudy does. I'd like to know. But I think storytelling is, I mean, it's in all of us. When I was uh, on my way to the Oh, hi, Trudy. When I was on my way to the studio today, I was listening to NPR and they were interviewing the guy who founded StoryCorps. And I don't know if you guys probably have heard of StoryCorps, but oh, yes. I think StoryCorps is one of the most brilliant forms of journalism because it's just raw. It is just asking people about their lives and to ask each other simple questions. And I really believe that the best stories are the ones that are very simple and very genuine. And so in answer to Trudy's question, no, because a lot of times I think um, as journalists, we want to massage it and we want to make it all look pretty. We want to design it. But at the end of the day, the best stories can be told, um, you know, just by someone speaking their truth and really stripping away all the bells and whistles. So I think it's just about articulating who you are and applying this to business, who you are and what your brand is and how you want to connect with the larger community, not just what's in it for you, but what's in it for all of you, you mm -hmm. know, the connections. Right, right. You know, one of the um, questions that I got here from John, and it was also on my list of questions. Um, By the is, way, I'm excited. I'm getting a lot of those hands. So I that's know. pretty cool. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
you. Let's see if we can get you to a thousand. Okay, How's that'd that? be cool. Yeah. Soon and get on it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at I'm not getting hardly any. Um, Shannon, come on. <laughs> um, um, John Leland has a question, and again, I was this is I was going to flow into this, and let's get it now. Is you know a brand typically has gone through you know a lot of uh process and consulting around you know crafting that perfect storyline that perfect headline um for a small business where what kind of tips do you have or where where would a small business start to to begin looking at how to craft that for themselves well consumers like to see the human side of the brand so um I will give you an example, and I'm trying to think of who, who was telling me about this, but I thought it was an interesting example of, oh, you know who it was? It was um, John C., the Pinterest, uh, manly Pinterest oh, Jeff, guy. Jeff C. Jeff C., oh. excuse me. Um, he was talking about how he had worked with this gentleman who has a company that deals with waste, I think, uh, recycling and waste. And he was talking about how they navigated telling that story um, through various channels. So he talked about on Pinterest, how they would pin a lot about um, how it helps the environment, what they're doing. And I happen to love Instagram. I think Instagram is a, a, such a great way for so many brands to tell their story. So say you have a tiny little antique store, something cool. Instagram should be your best friend and then doing fun little vines to talk about vignettes that you could put together, showing people, giving people information helps to develop your brand, right? If that's mm -hmm. what you're passionate about, if you have a, an antique store, whatever the business you have, what is the user benefit and why should they care about you? Because the more people care about you as a human being and connect with you, the more they're going to care about your business. And yeah. the same is true. I mean, believe me, when you say consultants, I've been in so many consultant branding meetings, focus <laughs> groups. Over I can the, imagine. You know, mm -hmm. as, a, as a news anchor, that's what they want to do. They want to ask, you know, 40 people, what do you think about her? Do you like her hair? Do you like <laughs> all these things? But at, but at the end of the day, I think the most important part of it is just trying to be uh, of genuine and to let viewers um, know who you are as a person, that you're not just this robot who's up there reading words on the screen. And so I, I think that that can be done not just in in pertaining to the news world, but for everyone who's trying oh, to yeah. build a brand is building a connection. And then Denise, when you put out great content through storytelling, through raw storytelling, not through sales, um, then people who love you and care about you and are following you will share. And what better endorsement right. is there than people sharing your content? Right. I, well, that is the best. <laughs> you know, what, what uh, Guy Kawasaki says that uh, first he said, you know, a retweet is the highest form of of uh, flattery. And now yeah. it's just sharing is the, yeah. is the best form of flattery. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Except for now, uh, everyone has a disclaimer. Retweets, not endorsements, just a retweet. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and the I haven't thing, seen that, but you know, Denise, I can see the other thing I wanted to that. add that I think is really important is that for every business person, you need to know your voice and you need to know your value. If mm -hmm. you know your voice and you know your value, you can craft your headline, and that's how you begin to navigate the world of storytelling through your brand in whatever level you're able to do it. Right, right. Well, and I think that um, in this day and age, right now, as we are speaking, you know, the visual me visual media is so huge that, you know, whether you are using images or you're using video or a combination, that's going to help even more than ever. Because I, I've been working online since 1996, and that's when, you know, it was text. Yeah. You know, we we had email newsletters that were text. We had, you know, if we had a website, it was text. And, you know, there might be a picture of you as the business owner, that yeah. kind of thing. But now, I mean, people are really telling their story with pictures and with video. And I think it's a lot easier now. You mentioned Instagram. I also I love Instagram and I think it's a way to tell your own backstory yeah. really easily. What's important to you? What are you doing? And then you can weave in the business pieces yeah. 
for example, you t you put on Instagram a picture of you sitting at your desk, yeah. ready to go <laughs> for this. And I was like, yeah, that is exactly what I want to see. And I reposted it yeah. because like, yeah, this is what's happening right now. And um, I think that that is really important to let people know that, that it, everything doesn't have to be carefully staged. Yes, I think that actually things shouldn't be carefully staged. You know, I loved always and it would drive everyone crazy when I would do it, but I love to show behind the scenes. So in the newsroom, you know, a little bit of pulling back the veil. So if you're a business owner, don't just tweet or Instagram or Facebook about your business because that seems like sales. But if you're a business owner who's going on a cool vacation that you've worked so hard for, that's a great little story to tell. Then people know something about you. There's mm -hmm. a, a lady here um, who has a vintage clothing store, Vintage by Misty. And she's really cool. She's Instagrams and does social media about all of her travels. And to me, she helps weave the story of why these vintage clothing, why this vintage clothing um, is, is how she picks it out and why it's so special to her because she loves travel. And so see through that, I learn more about her rather than, oh yeah, there's a girl who has a cool boutique. I know right. her more intimately now because she's used storytelling in a really effective way. Right. And I think that some, you know, this is a shift that we've seen in the last few years. And for a lot of people, they're not comfortable revealing yeah. personal content about themselves, right. personal information about themselves. And, you know, I, I know that that is a, a dance. It's a fine line for people yeah. or for introverts. Like I'm an introvert. And but I find that it's easier to be extroverted online yeah. than offline, for example. Well, but or I had you to can learn that about myself. You yeah. Know? And you could find out too where your comfort zone is. So maybe you don't want to show a bunch of personal pictures, but maybe you could show your travel pictures, show, show right. what you're seeing or pets. Everybody loves pets and connects over pets. You know, I have a pug and mm -hmm. if I post a picture of pug, pug nation comes out strong, <laughs> you know? So it's always been interesting to me over the years when I post something personal, rather than if I post something about a new story I'm working on, um, if I post something personal, it always gets so much more reaction. From right. I don't know, right. Denise, do you want me to answer any of these questions? John posted a couple of questions. Do you want me to answer yeah, them? Yeah, let me um, see. He's asking, uh, John has another question. Uh, let me just, uh, now that I realize I can put it up here. Can you see that yeah, now? Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. okay. So given that there are entire colleges uh, that teach the skills and disciplines of being a journalist, isn't it better to stick with the term storyteller versus speaking as if everyone who shares info is a journalist? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I'm not saying that everyone who shares information is a journalist. John, I, I completely see what you're saying there. Um, you know, and I think that that's a great point, especially given the fact that you know, as a journalist, I, I know how important it is when I'm reporting on things online to be cognizant and careful of the people I'm pulling information from online. Um, because as a journalist, you know, you're getting information that you're sharing that has been fact checked, that you're double sourcing, and you're getting from places that you know is credible. So there is definitely a differentiation there. Um, I'm just saying that storytelling, really what true storytelling is, um, is not something that is solely owned by people who are quote unquote journalists. So I hope that answers your question. I think it's a really good question. Yeah, yeah. And not just about, and journalists aren't just speaking the news. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's, I, I think one of the things I'm trying to do is tell stories that I think are really about the strength of the human spirit. Those are the stories that mm -hmm. I've loved the most over the years. I, I went last night to shoot a story with a family who is a conservative LDS family and who found out they have two of their six kids are, are gay. And so their story is about their journey to reconcile their faith with the love of their children and the strength of the human spirit. So that's just really a raw story about them, you know? And I think that um, yeah. those are the stories I gravitate towards the right. stories about and, people. And that, is the focus of your podcast too, isn't that correct? Yeah, in the in the podcast, um, we, we cover a wide variety of subjects. I do some politics, some human interest stuff, um, but I really love stories that that show people's strength. However, I mean, it can be someone who's um, 
dealt with breast cancer and who's walked through that and what they've found, because I think there's so much learning that we can all do um, when you listen to someone else who's walked in those shoes. So I cover a wide variety of subjects on the podcast. I also love to talk to people who have created business success for themselves. And, and I'm personally interested and fascinated, you know, with people like you, Denise, who found something that set your heart on fire and found a way to make that your career. Because I think that um, when we find a way to do things in life that bring us joy, and hopefully that we can do that in our work lives, not just our home lives, that then we're living our best lives. And then, yeah. then we have a sense of purpose. And boy, then you really can go out and you can tell stories because you love what you're doing. And so you want to tell other people about it, right? Exactly. Exactly. So before we um, get to bringing in anybody who might be, want to come on to the show for um you know, come into the video stream. Um, how do you how do you advise your cl <clears throat> clients? Excuse me, to figure out what the compelling stories are for their audience. Well, I think that um, that's a that's a good question because you know that's what I've done for fifteen years is mm -hmm. you know sort through editorial. Um, um, content to figure out what's going to be interesting, yeah. what people will want to watch. So what's your criteria? Um, mm -hmm. I think that if you really ask yourself what is interesting to you, you will have a better sense of what will be interesting to others. If you take out, you know, it, it, so I'm working with a, a raw food chef and she has amazing recipes and she wants to develop a 30 minute program. And she's all about, you know, um, sharing her recipes, which she has great recipes. But I told her, what about your backstory and sharing who you are and how you came to this place and why you feel so passionately about that? So once I got her sort of thinking about that, rather than just recipes, 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 and intertwining some of the personal story, mm -hmm. um, because I think people are, if you have good information to share, and so that what you're putting out there has value. So we don't want to waste anyone's time, you know. Right. Um, but if, if you're putting out something that has value, um, then I think people will be interested in it. So, I mean, I don't know if someone has specific questions about content that they would like to ask me because I, I love to look at that and tell people this is your headline. This is okay, how you. This is your invitation, yeah, folks. Yeah, there's yeah. Your this invitation. Is how you, yeah, we okay. always say it, in the news business, Denise, we say don't bury the lead. So a lot of times people will tell you this, 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 and then I get down to the bottom and go, wait a second, that is your most interesting point. Right. That's what right. you need to lead with. Well, do you think? Do you find that that many people might feel like what? their personal story it wouldn't be interesting to other people. You oh, know, we, we tend to, you know, kind of put ourselves, you know, in the backseat, you know, well, everybody else is more interesting. I have nothing to say. I mean, there's a fear of not being interesting. I just think that if you do it in a way, I'm not saying that every single story should be about you and your personal life and all of these mm -hmm. things, but I think in each one of us, um, there are stories about the why we got to today. And especially if you have a business, um, you know, so if you look at some of the, the big companies who are doing it really well, Bill Gates is a great example. Um, he's not being egotistical in telling his story, but he's telling his truth. And so he takes you on a journey about his now this amazing humanitarian work that he and his wife are do doing all over. And they really give you a little bit of their backstory and the why. And I find mm -hmm. that some of, you know, um, gosh, who's the guy now who's on the sharks? Uh, I love him. Cuban, Mark Cuban. He's great about that too. He really shows a, a big side of himself woven into his business. And I think, mm -hmm. that, you know, we can all apply a bit of that. Um, and that's how you build your audience is right. by sharing things. And, you know, people like you, Denise, who travel, you know, I mean, th there's nothing better than showing like cool places around your town, um, fun little um, restaurants and, and just like little slices of life. People love right. that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's a, that's something that, um, that I encourage my clients and students to start to step out and it's like, figure out, the you know, one or two things that is that you are comfortable sharing. Yes. You, know, what, okay, you don't have to share your whole life, you know, right. right. But what is it? So like my travels or, you know, where I run around Los Angeles yeah. and, 
you know, I love eating out and trying new restaurants. Yeah. So I'm going to show that and, you know, people like it. And so, through that, you, you know, build connections. So I'll give you a quick exactly. example. Um, in the political world, you guys may have seen that Chris Christie uh, a few, uh, three weeks ago had this viral video. And it was just because it was a raw moment. He was in New Hampshire. He was at this tavern. He was real people. He was taken off a stage and he was talking with a gentleman who asked him about, um, you know, drug abuse in America. And Chris Christie gave a, a story that was a personal story to him about, uh, I believe it was a law school friend of his um, who had gone through prescription pain addiction. And I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe he said that his friend had taken his own life. And it was such a raw and real moment for Chris Christie. You saw a little bit. It wasn't a stump speech. It wasn't this manufactured video. It was just right. real. And I thought that that was a really great example of raw storytelling. He, he probably, he didn't plan it, you know, and sometimes right. those are the, that's the best way to do it. Right. But it helps us as, as, you know, the audience to say, oh, there's something relatable about that person. That's right. That's yeah. right. And yeah. small business owners can use that and apply that to what they're doing. So, you know, whatever business you're in, that's how you create community. And that's how you continue to build your brand and building your brand will build your business. Right, right. And it builds your visibility, which is what this is about. Yeah. I mean, all of this really directly flows into that because the more people who are paying attention to your story and your message and are connecting with you, the more they're going to actually, you know, take act some sort of action, yeah. whether it's reading your next blog post or signing up for your webinar yeah. or buying your book or right. hiring you to, to work with them. Yeah. So, so are you open to having some people come on the stream if they want? I don't know. Sure, yeah, we'll absolutely. <laughs> okay, so this is your moment, folks. <laughs> um, I'm going to unlock. And if you'd like to come on and ask Carrie a question about storytelling, maybe give her you know, an, a little snippet of what you're working on or what you think your story is. She, she you know, put that out there. She threw that out there. She <laughs> wants to know. So she can give you her feedback. Yeah, so, absolutely. Shannon, um, I need more hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I see. We're in a race here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on. Who wants to come on board? John, Joselito, Bonnie, Trudy, Michael, the branding Cupid. Michael, all right. We're going to get him on here. <laughs> I yeah. love this, Michael. Hi, Hi, Michael. Hi, Michael. Can you Welcome. Yep. Great, great, great. Um, yeah, I, I just have a, a little bit of trouble trying to tell my story, and I, I'm not really uh, sure how to to say it to people, you know, online, I guess. Well, what's your story? <laughs> uh, tell us right now. Yeah. I mean, what, what do you do? I, I design brands for small businesses and entrepreneurs. Um, I'm a graphic designer and have been in the industry for around 15 years. I know I look young. Yeah, uh, what'd you start when you were five? What's going <laughs> on there, Michael? Uh, I'm 28 and um, I've been doing it since I was around 14. So uh, originally I started um, by creating a website on Homestead. That was way back when. And uh, to help teenagers. Uh, get over depression. It wow. Was called 14's magazine. Um, but it never really mounted to anything, but yeah. it's led me to where I'm at today. And, uh, well, that, here's what I, here's what I see is that you're someone who has been doing this since you were 14. You have a passion and you know how to tap into millennials, which a lot of uh, people are trying to figure out how to get that audience. I would lead with that, that that is your passion, that you're a graphic designer, that you have worked with millennials and that you know how to build people's customer base with the millennials. You have to find a way to, to stand apart from other people who are doing the exact same thing as you. And mm. right there, you just told me, you said you don't know how to say it, but you just in a minute's time, less than a minute, you gave me your headline. And it's a great headline. Not mm. to mention, Michael, I'm super interested in the work that you did because it shows that you have heart. So what you just told me is that you're not someone who's just a graphic designer, um, but you're someone who cares about people. You obviously have a connection to um, you know, fighting uh, and helping kids who have suffered depression. I would weave that into your story. 
weave that into your story and create your community in that way. That that's amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Plus you so have awesome Michael, hair. Yeah, exactly. Michael, you've got a there'll be a you know replay of this video. So you can go back and listen to what you said, Definitely. transcribe it, and you've got, you know, a way to work with that content to tell your story now. Yes. That's a great got- tip. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Michael. Good luck. Well, thank you so yes. much. Have, have a great thank day. Thank you for coming on, Michael. No problem. And- Bonnie, it's good to see you. How are you? Hi, good. Good to see you guys. And hi, Bonnie. Um, hi, hi Bonnie. Carrie. I don't think I've met you before. And Michael, I've seen you before a lot on here. Michael's been on Blab, um, watching a lot of people's Blabs. So that was the first time I actually saw him as opposed to his graphic. Yeah. And Michael, your graphic looks like you're eight years old. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously, I didn't know if he was a kid or an adult. So something needs to change there because you are clearly not eight years old. But I saw that too. I was like, "Uh oh, what are we getting here? Right, exactly. So we'll add that to our advice for Michael, but he's well on his way. A little misleading. (laughs) So Bonnie, you have been doing, like you're a blab queen. And, you know, I see your your shows being, you know, advertised all the time or not advertised, but I see you pr- them coming up all the time with the uh, notifications. And so uh, do you have a question for Carrie? Well, I wanted to know, and maybe you covered this in the beginning because I, I tuned in a little bit later, but Carrie, how, how did you get into this type of work? Did you, were you always okay being on the camera? You know, not everybody is, right? So people have a huge fear of public speaking. People never want to see themselves on video a lot of times. So were you always okay with that? Or how did you get to that point? Um, You know, I think, no, I wasn't always okay with it. I mean, I, I liked to perform, but I will tell you that, you know, early on when I was a reporter and I started out in Phoenix, which is a very large market to start in. And uh, when you're on live TV, there's a lot of mistakes that can be made. And many of them I have made. Um, But what I learned, and this is because part of what we do also is um, coaching and development for people. I love to see people become their best selves and really get up there and knock it out of the park. Um, I think that a couple things, people feel that butterflies is a bad thing and it's not. I think one of the things um, is learning how to train your butterflies so that they're flying in the right direction because sometimes anxiety can help you in a way because it, it really amps you up. A lot of athletes I know, They feel that before, but then it helps them get out there and and perform at the highest level. So that's one thing. Um, The other thing I think is just sort of stripping away the fear that everything is going to come out perfect. That once I got past that and I realized, okay, you know what? We don't all speak with perfection. Every word doesn't come out perfect. We don't always have the best, at least I don't always have the best word choice. So once I sort of got past that, so it was an evolution, Bonnie, I I won't sit here and say to you, yes, I went on camera and spoke to millions of people. And I had no anxiety. Um, But I learned how to train my butterflies. I learned that, you know, it's okay if everything I say is not perfect. And the other thing I will give you one other tip, and this is for people who are going to be doing public speaking of any kind. I was covering the Democratic National Convention um, the year that they were nominating Barack Obama. And you'll remember it was a big deal. It was our first Mm -hmm. African-American president. Eighty four thousand people were there. Um, And I remember I was lined up with a lot of uh, national reporters and I was a young reporter and I had all my notes. I had all my notes and I was very methodical. I was going to follow my notes and follow my notes. And I remember seeing no one else had notes. You know, these reporters, they weren't working off notes. And and I had this moment of, you know what? At this point, you either know it or you don't. You're here. You've been covering this. Get rid of the notes. And I think that that's true in a lot of cases with public speaking is that you have to know what you're talking about. And once you know inside, I got this. I'm there. I've got it. I'm not worried about it. It gives you this level of confidence. And one of the, um, we call them live shots. One of the live shots I did, uh, the guy next to me, a, a big reporter turned to me, goes, boy, you can ad lib for days. And I thought, <laughs> all right, perfect. I got rid of the notes and it just opened me up to a whole new level of performance, I think. I like That's that. That's a great story. That's a great story. Because I think that, you know, notes sometimes become a crutch. It does. 
I mean, I know for, for my own self, like I always start with notes because I know I don't want to forget anything, Yeah. but then you can get stuck in them too, yes. you know? So yes. I think I, I really love that, that, uh, what you said and also train your butterflies. So they're going in the right direction. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. So that would be yeah. my best yeah. advice for you, Bonnie. Tim, thank you, Tim. It actually wasn't for me. It was actually for everybody. Okay, good. Denise knows. I'll just get on here and just literally start laughing. But, um, <laughs> but I just, but I think it's a really good. I loved hearing the story, and I think it's really, really um, helpful information. And Tim, Tim Ferris, is that Smart Passive Income? Okay, so oh, no, that's did, uh, Pat Flynn is Smart Passive Pat Flynn. Income. Okay, thank you, Pat Flynn is um, he does tons and tons of speeches. People see him all the time as a keynote for this and a keynote for that. And he did a scope one time, and this is where I really got into listening to his message. He did a scope, he's very well known in terms of entrepreneur land, right? And especially podcasting. He did a scope about how nervous he gets every time before he speaks in public. And I was like, what? <laughs> this person is saying this? I mean, it would be, it would be just the same as if you were saying that or Denise were, I mean, I'd be yeah. like, seriously. Yeah. And he talked about similar to what athletes do. He talked about the physicality, everything that he goes through. Yeah. First he starts sweating profusely. And I was like amazed by that. And then he talked about like kind of how he psychs himself up and, and gets out of it. And he has this whole routine that he goes through. So for me, somebody who's just starting to do this, seeing that somebody who's out there goes through that was hugely yeah, helpful. Absolutely. Okay. Well, so, thank you. Thank you so much. Bye, I thank you. It. Thank you, Bonnie. Um, I want to be mindful of the time um, and Carrie's time. So I'm going to ask you the final question yeah. that I ask all my guests for the backstory. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be what is your most memorable adventure? Whatever, in whatever context. Oh, wow. Gosh. Going, to, going to lunch. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're not going to lunch yet. <laughs> um, I, you know, having been a reporter and, a, and an anchor for 15 years, I've, I've just had the good fortune of uh, traveling and seeing so much. Uh, you know, I would have to say that and this might sound odd, but this, I think, goes to the fact that I believe so strongly in the strength of the human spirit. Um, but I covered one of the biggest fires here, the Rodeo Chedesky fire. Um, and it was absolutely a devastating fire. Um, and houses burned and lives were torn apart. Um, and I was there, and I say this as an adventure because I was there, we stayed in the evacuation zone, and I was there the day the evacuation orders were lifted and people turned, came back. And the sense of community that was felt there that day, um, you know, as a young reporter, seeing that to me um, meant so much. So I guess in a way that was that was a very memorable adventure because being in a fire evacuation zone, um, sleeping in, you know, wherever you can find a place to sleep, not changing clothes for days. It's not exactly <laughs> like a glamorous that everyone thinks reporting on TV is, but it was an adventure and an adventure with an ending that to me um, solidified why I got into journalism. Mm -hmm. That was uh, storytelling. And that was no, talking about stories of the human spirit. So yeah. I guess, you know, I've been all over the world and I could sit here. I'm sure I know you love to travel. Yeah. Um, so I could talk to you for a long time about that. But when you ask about an adventure, um, that stands out in my mind because the way seeing people come together um, in the end was something that just was very meaningful to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, an adventure encompasses all of our life. So, you know, um, yeah, that's why I have no context around yeah. it. Yeah, well, and you know what, Denise, adventure also means sometimes, and this was the case for me, pushing yourself um, to do things that you didn't know that you had the strength mm -hmm. to do. And when you're reporting for days on end on national TV as a young reporter, not sleeping, barely eating, seeing people's lives up turned upside down, it pushes you to know that you have what it takes to be there in that moment and to right. just sometimes go where the adventure is going to take you in life, right? And it's not always right. a fun adventure, but there's always learning in the adventures in the end. Thank you so much. You've told my story for me. <laughs>
It's been so much fun with you today and all of you guys for uh, being here to blab with us today. I loved it. Yeah. So before we sign off, what's the best place for people to reach you, Carrie? Um, so you can get me on my website, uh, inspiredmedia360.com. You can get me on Twitter, Carrie Pena TV, uh, Facebook, Carrie Pena TV. So I'm all over. I'm all over social media or Instagram. Instagram, Instagram Carrie Pena. <laughs> All right. And you can see um, above, you know, the little um, information above Carrie's picture. That's her Twitter account. And also follow her here on Blab because I think we'll be seeing a lot more of her on Blab. Yeah, I like it. I have a, I have a feeling <laughs> <laughs> you're a natural. So, um, thank you, one and all, for being here with me today live, with being here and showing Carrie so much prop yeah, love thank you um, really appreciate that thank you shannon um, <laughs> thank you, Denise. we've got the peanut gallery in the background <laughs> there um you can get notice of scheduled guests at adventuresinvisibility.com and i send out notification uh to let you know what's coming up also you can get adventures in visibility as a podcast it's available on stitcher itunes and soundcloud you can sign up at adventuresinvisibilitypodcast.com so until the next time have an adventurous day and thank you so much carrie Penner, for being with my with us today take care everyone <laughs>